2021 strongman season has been absolutely jam-packed, more than making up for 2020. And obviously, that means we've got another show to talk about, one that you might not have heard of, the Magnus Ver Magnussen Classic 2021. Lizzy, sexy Magnus, he's putting on his own competitions. What a man. <laughs> so Magnus Ver Magnussen, for those that don't know, one of the absolute greatest of all time, four times world's strongest man. He's referee at most major strongman shows. He's been involved in the sport for, you know, donkey's years now. <laughs> he's an authority in the sport. He's in the Absolutely. Uh, strongman hall of fame also. He is. He's one of the, the greatest to ever do this. He's putting on his own show over in Iceland. Looks like a fun show and he's trying to combine modern events with old classics, especially traditional types of stones that are used Stone in lifting. Iceland. So the competition is six events in total, spanning three days, and Magnus has confirmed that it will be live streamed, but we'll have the uh, finer details of that soon. But each event is going to be at a different outdoor location in Iceland. So it sounds like it's going to look amazing. Let's take a look at the events. So the first event is a stone press for max weight. We haven't seen a stone press for a while. Stone pressing is a, a very old traditional event. Mm. Uh, we've seen it at World's Strongest Man before, and more recently we've seen kind of block pressing. We saw it at Europe's last year, they pressed an Atlas that stone. That was an Atlas overhead. stone, yeah. and that's a little bit different. That was for yeah. reps. This is for maximum weight. And the, the interesting thing with this event, it's not like a barbell where the guys can go and practice, or even like logs. Mm. Every stone is different. So the athletes have really got to be good at adapting and figuring out the finer details of how they're going to press the, these rocks. They aren't going to be balanced. No. Every single rock that they use will be different. So normally on these kind of things, they start fairly light, around 80, 90 kilos, which still isn't light no. when you're pressing <laughs> awkward stones. I mean, I've gone up to Scotland and tried a few of the traditional ones up there. Much, much harder to press 100 kilos on a rock than it is in the gym with a with a barbell or a log the guys that can figure out hand positioning watch the other guys you know it's it, it's it's an event that favors dare i say it the smarter guys <laughs> and also it, it's quite a good one for the very very strong pressers sometimes the the jerking type movement the more explosive type movements mm. aren't quite as effective particularly if you don't get the timing right the second event <laughs> <laughs> you can't even not laugh about no, it. The second event is an axle deadlift for reps. and How dare he? No. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there is um, there is a bit of a running theme right now of axle deadlift being in a, a lot of competitions. And do you know what? I will say this. Over the, the almost 20 years of me doing Strongman, you see things like this of a theme appearing yeah, yeah, where yeah. for short periods of time, competitions just do the same event. I've seen it with like dumbbell press, um, actually block press for, for yeah. a while in the early sort of, um, well, I'd say 2010 to 2014 seemed yeah. to be in a lot of competitions. Um, you see it with, with other events as well. And it just seems to be right now the trend is axle deadlift for reps. Probably magnified by the fact that we've had so many competitions in a short space of time. But, um, you know, nothing wrong with an axle deadlift for reps. A lovely choice of event, Magnus, if you're watching. <laughs> we'll move quickly on. Yes, to event number three. And they're testing shoulder power again this time in a more traditional way although it's going to be speed as well it's a log medley mm. so i think it's going to be four logs each one ascending in weight getting heavier and heavier um fastest time wins if they can do all the logs but you know often people don't do all of them like liz said earlier it's a slow paced competition it's yes. not like the fast paced live shows this is going to be over a few days so mm. the recovery time is going to be much better suits the guys that maybe aren't quite as fit so it suits smart, unfit, strong men. <laughs> sounds perfect. Sound, sounds offensive. <laughs> I like the sound of this. <laughs> yes. So event number four, stone to shoulder medley. Yeah, stone to shoulder we've seen again in a few shows. Not a common event that you see all that often. Classically, we've seen it at the Arnold's with Kiliuszkowski being incredible at it. Yes. I believe they have to get it onto the shoulder and then move their spare hand away. So you can't just kind of balance it there. It's going no. to be right up onto the shoulder, get out. the down signal, then bring the stone down. Mm -hmm. So event number five is quite an iconic Icelandic event. It's the Husafal stone carry. I presume for max distance, although it doesn't stipulate that. Absolutely. Max distance. This is a staple of Icelandic heritage. The, the Husafal stone you had to pick up this stone and kind of just carry it as far as possible. History states that it was a farmer's wife that was there, that had the record and could, uh, sorry, daughter 
that had the record could really? carry it the furthest. Um, I think some of the strong men have managed to go a little further in, in modern time. But it's it's a brutal event. It's a horrible stone. Scars up your forearm, scars your chest, and you've just got to get it up. Go as far as you can. With the weight crushing down on your chest, you stop breathing. Magnus Ver himself, this event cost him possibly what could have been his fifth World Strongest Man title. Is that 19, when, oh, was that Ted Van Der Paar? It was Ted Van Der Paar, yeah. yeah. It was in his home country as well. Yeah, he just messed he up and he, won, really. he admits it himself. He could have been a five-time world champion. But regardless, these guys have that to battle with. And then the final event is not Atlas Stones. The final event is a super yoke into a frame carry medley. So we're finishing on a speed event, mm. which is interesting to which see. Is basically what Atlas Stones has become anyway. Well, yes, yeah, it has. Mm -hmm. But um, no, yoke into, sorry, yeah, super yoke into the frame. It's going to be interesting to see this, particularly if this is the last event. I mean, I don't know that this is the order of the event, so I, I will say that, that mm. this could, could change. But it's a, a great test of, of speed and strength. The weights that they use these days just have upped so much. I remember the first super yoke being around the 300 kilo mark at yeah. World's Strongest Man. And now we've seen up as heavy as six, you know, 600 plus kilos yeah, that's in some of the shows. The standard weight is between four and 500 kilos for, yeah. for this type of, of contest. And the frame carries as well. We've seen those get stupidly heavy. I hope and I think knowing Magnus, it will be without straps. Oh, it will be. Um, which is the real way to do it. Yeah. Test the grip as well as the back and legs, leg strength. So one thing that's great about this show, we have 14 competitors. I've seen complaints that we're only getting 10, 10 in most shows right now. This one has 14 or 14 that's been announced so far. Mm. I will state that things can change. Of course. So first up of the athletes is Sami Ahola. Now I don't know a huge amount about Sami from Finland and he is the Finnish log record holder with 185 kilos. So big strong shoulders on him. I don't know how many high level shows, he's certainly not done too many, this could be a good step up for him, but a great opportunity to, sh <laughs> a great opportunity to show what he's capable of. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> Excuse me while I choke on my tongue. <laughs> you always leave me the trickier names, you do this on purpose, okay. I think it says Pierre Mottel from France. Pierre, if you're watching, or if that is your name, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I don't know too much about, well, I don't know anything about Pierre, to be honest. Okay. It's actually very rare for us to see French yes. high-level strongmen, so it'd be good to see what he's capable of. Definitely. Um, they've got some good weightlifters in France. They've got some great athletes. There's no reason why they couldn't be good at strongman. Mm -hmm. Again, it's... I've mentioned before it's a regional thing and you know certain countries strongman's really popular other countries it's not so popular so be good to see what the French are like. Next up we have South African Herit Van Stad and Herit is an unbelievable guy he's the lion man if you haven't seen my talking strongman with him make sure you check it out this guy cuddles lions daily and he's wrestles a dangerous them. man. <laughs> yeah but he's an awesome guy it's good to see him coming over to Iceland for this show. So another more familiar name, we have Maxime Boudreau from Canada coming over to do this competition. Obviously Maxime came third at this year's World's Strongest Man, so a very high caliber athlete indeed. Yeah, Maxime's had a good year. He's, he's, I say he's had a good year, he had a great performance at World's Strongest Man. Went back to Canada and, and didn't actually win the Canadian no. Championships, but picked up a small injury. He's been over to do the Giants Live. Um, he'll be coming to really challenge to win this title, I think. He, he, you know, he's, he's someone that's on the up and, and wants to prove he's one of the best on the planet. And Maxime loves his stones as well. He does. And then next up, we have the British duo of Gav Bilton and Andy Black. Two of the biggest men in Strongman, two huge personalities, had great years this year, really made a name for themselves. So mm. good to see these guys getting the opportunity at this show. Next up from Estonia, Raven Tots. I purposely left that one for you because I know you, I know you like saying it. <laughs> Last time I said it, he sent me a message. He's like, you sound like an alien. <laughs> Just call me Mr. Schmidt. <laughs> Mr. Schmidt. <laughs> oh, sorry, Irvin. Irvin talks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's, you know, Irvin, well, I've spoken to him actually. I'm sure he won't mind me saying he hasn't performed 
as well as he hoped he would this year but he's I think probably being a bit hard on himself he's still very new to the sport you know he's perfectly capable I think he can still go on and do great things so this would be good a different set I of events I think that's important to realize he is still new very to it new, yes. and a lot of the you can have a good performance in a show with the right events so you know how much I like saying that yeah but then you go to another competition it's a completely different set of events and you don't do so well mm. it can knock that confidence a bit and you've got to remember for a lot of these guys, they are developing athletes. Yeah. They still need a couple more years working on certain areas, getting stronger. And Irvin is, has some very, very good strengths mm -hmm. um, and just things that he needs to work on as well. And I'm sure he's going to get the opportunity to prove what he's capable of. Next up, we have the first of the Icelandic athletes. And this guy has really proved over the last couple of years that he is world class. Athor Ingelsson, he... Won Iceland's Strongest Man last year. Yes. His performance in Bahrain was exceptionally good. Yes. And his performance at World's Strongest Man this year was very, very good. Qualifying for the final. He's had a great year. Picked up an injury recently. Mm. And I believe he's on the men now and looking to prove he's back to his best. So next up is Stefan Torfesen, who was the winner of this year's Iceland's Strongest Man. And I believe Iceland's Strongest Man is a Wuss qualifier, which is going to put him on the Wuss roster for next year. So we should be seeing much more of Stefan. So it'd be very interesting to see. I'll be interested to see how he does in this. This is going to be a step up from Iceland's Strongest Man, just because you get more high class athletes competing in the same show. And then if there is a weakness, it tends to be shown. But obviously, did amazing to win Iceland's Strongest Man. And if he's kept improving since then, he's going to do well in this one. Next up, we have Christian Haraldsson from Iceland. Came fourth, Iceland's strongest man. Again, someone I haven't seen too much of, so I'm looking forward to seeing his performance as well. Next up is Sigfus Fostel, one of your athletes. Yeah, i got two of my athletes competing in this show, so that's really cool to oh, see. Yeah, and um, Sigfus, he's actually competed at World's Strongest Man, but it was a very short-lived career thus far he was injured on the same event as you at the 2019 world strongest man heats um was yeah. it the same or was it the truck pool or the monster he, he, truck he pool? hurt himself on the truck pool right yeah, okay. first event so his, his goal is to try and get back to world strongest man but he's had an incredible body weight transformation yes. recently. Sigfus was up at 191 kilos yeah. and he's down to around 140 now. Wow. He's looking so much fitter. His top ends, he's, he's had a number of surgeries as well. So he's, he's kind of in that transitional phase right now where mm. he's building up that strength back. Training's going well though, and there's some events that he can do well on. So I'm sure he's looking forward to giving this contest a big, big performance. Next up, another Icelander, Thomas Darry Thorsteinsson, someone Again, I don't know too much about it. Competed in Iceland's Strongest Man back in 2018. Haven't seen too much of him, particularly on the, the international scene. No. He may have done some smaller shows in Iceland, but an opportunity to show what he's capable of. So athlete number 13 is another one of your clients, Kim Jurak Lorentzen, I think I said his name. Yeah, right. Kim from Greenland. Yes. There's like literally no one in Greenland. <laughs> He's, an, he's actually a very, very good up and coming strong man. I expect him to do very well on the deadlift. I think he'll have a lot of fun trying some of the new events. This is the mm. big issue for someone like Kim. There's not a huge amount of areas for him to train and equipment no. for him to train on in Greenland, no. but his deadlift is unbelievable. His log lifts improve loads. He actually won the log lift at the official Strongman, Strongman Games, Games and, uh, deadlift and log lift event at the Arnold Classic. Yes. <laughs> My goodness. That was a, <laughs> a handful to, to remember, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, he's up and coming and I think he could do very, very well. And our final athlete from Germany, good to see this man getting some recognition because he is a very good strongman actually, is Dennis Kulrus from Germany. Mm. Uh, the German champion, multiple time German champion now, and he's he's actually a very strong guy, so I'd look forward to seeing how he does. I think anyone that can come top three in this and really show they're, they're doing well on the international scene is going to get the opportunity to compete in bigger shows, so I think this is a good one to look out for. Magnus Ver will put on an incredible show for these yeah. guys. Once we know more in-depth information, we will bring it to you guys along with the you know the streaming times and, and where you can watch it. So there we have it guys, the Magnus Ver Magnussen Classic 2021 athletes and lineup. Let us know your thoughts as always, and we'll be back next time. Just looking forward to the wave. <laughs> this is terrible. We need something else. You're the one that came up with it. I didn't come up with it. It happened naturally one You time. came up with it. You're like, Loz, wave. People liked with it. A, with like a knife pointing at my no, abdomen. No, people liked it. And, <laughs> you know, I just... Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what we're doing anymore. <laughs>